Tintable bed liner for a color matched to your truck bed liner. How cool is that? Hey, hey, hey! Guys, I'm super excited about today. Whether it's the right thing to do or not, we're gonna be able to call a couple things done on this. Done, in color, like in living color, with a dang V8 in it. This 78 Chevy Love is getting some loving today. Let's go. This is not a professional shop. I'm just a regular guy, just like you, in a regular garage, goofing off and learning along the way. The reason I bring that up is because in a professional shop, we wouldn't be concerned about putting color under there or putting that in it while the rest of the truck is still this far off. But today, we're making that engine compartment red and we're putting that small block in it. I'm just here for the commentary. Now, I'm just overexcited to see that, that engine in there and some color. Whether it's the correct next step or not, it's my truck and I'm gonna do it. Now I've had this vision for this truck since I started. I've been making sure that everything looks like they belong together and they flow together. That's why I did the tubs in the bed like this, radius, the corners there, the angled sides. And I brought that all the way up here under the hood where we have the tubs and the angled sides and the radius corners. We did the recess in the firewall in the same shape as the gauge cluster. This truck will be Dodge Viper Red. The bed here will be done in a color matched bed liner. I'm using this Raptor bed liner. So you can actually take a 2K paint, you go to your body shop supply store, they'll mix it up for you. They'll keep the binders out so it works well with the bed liner. And it's a perfect match to your final color. Now keeping with the theme of me doing things kind of the same, front and back and keeping it all similar. I'm not doing paint up here guys. I'm doing the bed liner. It'll take that bed and bring it up front even more. I might even do a little bit down the console somehow. Kind of a, a two-tone idea, but not with color, with texture. Should have had all this taken apart before you guys got here. This primer was sprayed a while ago, so I'm blocking it with 180, so it's all scuffed up, and it'll be ready for us to spray that bed liner on. Sanded through in a couple spots, so I'm hitting those with a little bit of primer. On this 78 Chevy Love, there's a VIN on the cowl. I cleaned the metal off of that, did some etching primer on that, and just sprayed some red paint on there. The same stuff that we did the transmission with. That was buried in primer and paint before, and now it's legible.
That was a wax and grease remover. This particular one is from Excel Auto Body Products, number 91004. It cleans all the wax and grease and oils from your fingers and all that crap off of there. I don't want to make a mess of my floor. We'll throw some plastic over the truck, just kind of masking off things that we don't want to get the bed liner on. Then we can get to mixing that stuff up and throwing it all over that. All right guys, that's good enough for me. I put some tape on the ends of the control arm mounts and the motor mounts and all that too because I don't want that bed liner to compromise how those control arms are supposed to sit in there. But we're ready to mix this up and do some stuff. I think we'll set up shop over there. Yeah. I'm not always one for following the destructions, but when it comes to paint, that's chemistry. It's science. Last time I took any sort of science class was in high school. I went to an alternative high school, and don't get me wrong, it was a great school. But some days, the science teacher's idea of a good science lesson was watching the movie Tremors. Cocktail? That's my connection to Kevin Bacon. Anyway, so I've been shaking this up for about two minutes. It's pretty good now. Now if this was a black kit, you would just fill the rest of this up with the hardener that came with it up to that line. Shake it up, spray it. This kit is tintable. So they say you can fill it up to there with the hardener and then fill it up to the next line with your base coat. That 2K without the binders. But they actually recommend dumping this into a mixing cup, putting the hardener in it, and mixing your, your 2K paint with its own hardener into it, mixing it up in a mixing cup and putting it back in here. Shaking it up and putting it on the shuts gun. This one actually has an adjustable tip. I found the texture that I like best is pulling that tip out three full turns. And they suggest shooting it at a PSI between 40 and 80, something like that. I found that I like 60. I had made a removable pocket for the center console. I went ahead and sprayed that already. I also sprayed the frame. That's looking pretty dang good, guys. I like that. I know it's different, but that's the way I am. And I think that nicely painted engine is gonna look killer just nestled into that textured finish of the same color. So we're gonna take the Raptor hardener and put about seven ounces into this mixing cup. Just gonna set that aside. Now a smart guy would have got a bigger mixing cup than this. Because once this is all mixed up, it's right at the top. So go get yourself a bigger one than I did. So we're gonna do this in stages, since I don't have a lot of room in there and I don't wanna make a mess when I'm stirring it up. So we're gonna dump half of this into that cup. Then we're gonna do half the hardener. Uh. And stir. Now they say up to a 10% color. Anywhere between like eight and 10 would be totally fine. If you ask me, maybe even less. 10% of this would be about 
75 milliliters. We're gonna go just a hair less than that. So that'll be about 8%. A lot of people say you don't need to use the activator with your base coat. I've done it both ways. I've done even just regular base coat. I've done 2K without the activator and I've done it with. But since we're doing it the way the destructions say, we're gonna mix it up. So looking at this cup, turn it till you find the four and it's, it's at that three. So what we're gonna do is look for the one, which is right there and we're gonna put the hardener in until it reaches that three. Then it's at a four to one ratio. Easy peasy. We'll give that a mixing. And we'll take this and we'll put it in this. Then we'll take the rest of this and the rest of our hardener and mix it in there. But first, it's a good idea to take this and put it in this, mix it up, so you get all that extra bed liner off the sides of this thing before we put it in there. Now that I got that Mixed up pretty good, I'm gonna dump it back into the, the bottle and then we'll shake it up for about two minutes. What I did was take one of these paper filters, cut the bottom off of it, so that way it fits in that bottle and I don't have to spill that everywhere. Now neither this color nor the bed liner is cheap. So I'm gonna scrape it all off the side and make sure I get it all. cap back on and we'll get to shaking tremors <laughs> so you don't want to just go back and forth like you would paint with this. You kind of want to crisscross it and just kind of throw it around so the texture ends up even. Otherwise, it'll just be stripey. You might even end up with runs. And nobody likes the runs. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna toss this around a little bit, let it cure for a while, and then do a second coat. You ready? Let's do it. Another thing that I'm gonna do is start with the corners and areas where I might not be super happy with body work and stuff. I'm gonna start with those spots, get those done, and then I'll go over the whole thing. That way they kind of get an extra coat. Just gonna give that a second. Then we'll just let the whole thing have it.
love it. I am so happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up one more bottle to give all this a second coat. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited because by the end of this video, there's gonna be a small block Chevy sitting in there. All right guys, today's the day. Cody's on his way over, so is my dad, I think. And we're gonna put this engine in there. I can't wait. This is pretty exciting. Sometimes you just need to see things come together a little bit to keep your motivation up. And your motivation and momentum go hand in hand. It was kind of a fight mating the transmission to the engine. Torque converter didn't want to seat all the way in there. She don't even drink beer. Well, it's hanging in there. Didn't film a lot because my dad and my kid were here, so we were just kind of getting it done. Now it's in there for the most part. Something's getting in the way, but the transmission lines are hitting the floor, causing the transmission tail shaft to get pushed towards the driver's side and won't go up high enough. So we're gonna have to clearance that. Figure I'll just cut a hole around them and patch it up. Can't get at it that way. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? I gotta see what that looks like with the carburetors on it. Couldn't be any happier with that. I say we test with those manifolds again. What do you guys think? So I didn't have all the accessories on the front of that engine when I was building all that. And I have a lot more room up front than I thought I was going to. It's real tight by the firewall and I'd like to give it a little bit of breathing room and move it forward a half inch. So I think I'm gonna modify the motor mounts, but that's for another day. This is totally good enough for now and I am super happy. And seeing that has got me excited because if this truck turns out as good as that looks, this thing is gonna be cool. Hopefully you guys had as much fun as we did in the garage today. Until next time, check this out.